on today's episode. Welcome. Here are show repairs I've done and share the techniques and tools that I use. If you find this video valuable or even entertaining, uh, please subscribe as it really helps. It's great to get your feedback, so leave a comment below and don't forget to hit that like button. Also check out the description below because there'll be additional information and some useful links. So what madness is this? Uh, well, if you've been looking at uh, my videos recently, I've been messing around with uh, various Arduino based uh, projects. And in previous history, I'd um, had a foray into the ESP8266, these little um, Wi-Fi modules. At that time, I was uh, trying to, to use the, the Node MCU type programming, or Lua, and uh, essentially I couldn't, couldn't quite get my head around it. So um, the other day when I was uh, investigating OLEDs, um, I came across... This little guy, uh, a little OLED shield, and at that time I had absolutely no idea what it was an OLED shield for, and that led me down a, a rabbit hole um, into this world of uh, of Wemos, as it's as it's known. So, as we can see on this board here, which is another another uh, shield, and this. SHT30 is a combined humidity and temperature sensor. Uh, but the, the main uh, brains of the outfit is, uh, is this little guy here. Um, as I mentioned, it has the, uh, uh, the ESP8266 um, chip on there. And again, we can see the Wemos. So built in is uh, obviously a USB connection and a uh, a driver, um, TTL CMOS driver there, which is uh, which is a CH340. Um, so the concept is that you can uh, obviously program this little guy up, and it has the uh, the Wi-Fi features, and it's a, a little uh, micro processor in its own right. Uh, I should just mention all of these things run off of 3.3 volts, and then you can you can uh, literally build build onto, onto that with the with the other shields with the OLED and there are relays and uh, and pressure sensors and all sorts of uh, good things that you can get and if you want to make up your own stuff there's even little prototyping um, boards so you can get those and in addition to the prototyping boards you can actually uh, Put the the system onto onto these bases. So not only can you build up here, but you can build up uh, next next door to it as well. And all of the uh, all of the uh, pins are are interchanged. And you can even go one next step further than that and have a have a triple base. So the the concept is obviously modular, and plugging them together, um, you just need to think about the the, the arrangement that you're going to going to make. I'm not going to go into the ice. These are ice, mainly I said squared C based devices. Um, so um, they have a, a little um, solder bridge on the back to select the, uh, the, the hex address. So um, obviously change that between different devices and thinking back on the on the stacking obviously the OLED shield will be the the tallest one in the stack um, each uh, module comes with a selection of, of different um, headers or, or sockets that you can use so clearly for this one being the top we would just um, use this this pin header um, the, probably the most common one that I'm going to be using, I think, is this header here, which has the the sockets with the with the long pins. And so, obviously, uh, once you've soldered that to the board, um, that is the the method by which you you stack them. Obviously, you can stack on on top of here and plug this either into to a base or, or into something else. Uh, if you don't wish to do that. Then you have the the shortened version of that with just the, the the female header on the top. So it's a very very flexible system. I'm just going to um, knock something up um, quickly using this and the uh, temperature and humidity sensor and display 
that out on the on the on the OLED there. So I'm going to start building this this project. Um, I think it's an idea. I'm not quite sure. Some um, website or whatever I got the 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 idea from, and they recommended it to be a, a good idea to start off with one of these dual bases. And obviously you can see kind of which way which way up it's supposed to go, and just start that off with these um, female headers. Uh, once you've got that set up, um, each individual module that you want to add to the project, it's easy for you to locate um, from the reset pin up in the corner there, and so that, that you know that that needs to sit on in in that uh, in that fashion there. Uh, this might be a little bit easier to see on the back here that uh, that's where the reset pin is in that corner there so we know it needs to go that way up and for this particular device obviously being the main processor I want to be able to plug it into other devices and being sort of modular you can plug these things together and at the end of the project want to take the things apart and and use them in a different order so um, this is the more flexible route so you have the ability there to obviously stack boards on top and uh, and plug this into other devices so just going to get that uh, soldered together so here we can see i've uh, soldered the headers onto the onto the baseboard and then built that up onto the uh, the main processor board, the uh, ESP8266, and uh, obviously, as I mentioned before, the OLED is going to be the, the the top one. So, just another another tip here, uh, probably obvious, but um, if we plug the headers into the tops of the sockets, then it will make the uh, the job of of soldering uh, an awful lot easier. So here we can see the uh, the assembled modules. Um, OLED on the top there. Underneath the actual SHT30 board I've not soldered the headers on to. Um, I'll give a link in the description to uh, where I'm getting the code to do this and a guy suggested just very carefully tinning just the edges of the of the holes on the 3.3 volts ground D1 and D2 which are all that are needed and literally just sandwiched it together um, so we'll see. We'll see how that works out. Uh, if not, it's easy to uh, to to pull it apart and, and and put the headers on. And then obviously we have the uh, the, the the processor module. Then and I'm just going to leave this this board at the at the bottom uh, just for stability. Obviously going to need to be plugging this into the USB connection to pro to program it. So um, we'll get on and um, see where we go from there. So here we can see the uh, the sketch, and uh, as I say, I provide a link in the description uh, of the the site where I got this from. And uh, as you saw, if you watched my other video on the OLED, um, this will be very familiar to you. Now, one important thing to note is that this Adafruit library here um, is different. It's been modified to include the actual um, OLED that uh, the WeMOS chip has, which is a different size. It's the 64 by, by 48. It's the same address, so we don't need to change that. Uh, but again, in the, in the website uh, that I'll, I'll link to, you need to download that and change the name and uh, replace the uh, original Adafruit uh, directory with that. Uh, otherwise, it's not going to work. So again, we can see our addresses, and this here, the SHT30, um, the HEX45, is the address of the temperature and humidity sensor, and uh, that's done by default. You can change that to HEX44 by uh, putting a link on uh, on two, two solder pads on the, on the chip, but uh, for us it's the same at 45. In our setup, uh, as always, um, a serial port is set up for, for debugging purposes and display begin display display so we now go into our void loop and it simply gets the information from the uh, from the sensor 
small uh, text size here, uh, just text size one and print it in white, move the cursor to the upper left hand corner, prints out the name of the sensor, prints T and the, uh, the temperature in, in Celsius. You can change that to Fahrenheit uh, should you feel the need. Uh, having done that, it's similar for the humidity, percentage of the humidity. And finally, just a, a cheeky note at the end to, to print out uh, Informatica. So a very, very simple routine. And as you can see down here, um, if you if you just um, validate the the, the sketch, um, you do get some strange messages, but they're just advisory messages. And when you go to upload, um, it's not the same as uh, for a, for an Arduino uh, project. You get this percentage of the um, of the amount of the upload, and some uh, when that gets to 100%, obviously it's working. Um, now you do have to set um, the uh, you have to include again libraries for the uh, the WeMOS and include those in the Arduino IDE, um, but that's uh, referenced again from the from the site, so I'm not going to go through that. So for, finally, let's just um, we have uploaded the sketch. Let's see how it works. So here we can see the uh, completed uh, project, and as we saw before, the uh, processor board at the bottom. Now I ended up having to put the, uh, the proper headers onto the sensor board because I was getting very strange uh, re readings, and the OLED on the on the top there. So I think that makes for a a very neat uh, very neat display. As for the accuracy of uh, 34.39 degrees, uh, and on here on my other meter, 34.1. So it's not uh, not a million miles away. Um, so I'm very happy with the with the with the project the way it's turned out, and I think we're going to be seeing uh, a lot more of these guys. Oh, hold hold on, uh, what was that? You do, you don't like that format, huh? Well. We can soon change that. And so uh, rearranging the, the configuration uh, really couldn't be simpler. And what's that? You don't like that either. Huh. So there we have it. Um, now this really is uh, Lego for geeks. <laughs> Lego for geeks.